Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series, this is episode number 66 and today we are returning with two games of our Lions against Lager Warsaw in the Europa League and then West Brom in the Premier League as well. Before we play the games though, shall we be getting on of camera and also show you a new signing arriving in January. So of course in the last episode you saw the new season starting uh, with a transfer special of course and our Premier League season opener which was our 2-0 victory away in New White Hart Lane against Spurs. I then played five games off camera including our final Europa League qualifier against Slavia Prague and we won the first leg away in the Czech Republic by two goals to one. Benka last year's Europa League Golden Boot winner got his fourth of the qualifying stages already from a penalty 30 minutes in but Slavia Prague did, uh, did equalise just for the hour mark. Uh, Barton scored a wonderful goal from just outside the area to make it 1-1 but with 15 minutes to go we were still tied in this game it was going to be a decent result to take back to the den but we still wanted to win the game and the guy that won it for us well he's reliable he always comes good John Black with 15 minutes to go giving us the winner off the bench and sending us back to the den with the victory uh, then uh, on the weekend we beat Norwich by two goals to nil back in the Premier League uh, the den uh, Reddy Naldo scored one once again, uh, to start the season off very well, two goals in two games in the Premier League, five minutes after the restart, and then with a minute to go, Menji uh, made it 2-0, and uh, that wrapped up the three points there in a very important win. At this point as well, Louise was out injured too, after picked up a knock against Slavia Prague, uh, and in the second leg of our Europa League qualifier, was another win against the Czech side. Benka bagged a brace in this game. He's going for the golden boot again, and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets it. This guy loves playing in the Europa League, uh, scored seven minutes in, then just started to restart as well to make it 2-0 as we got the victory and went through to the group stages and you'll see our opponents in the group stages in today's episode of course we're facing one of them in uh, in Leisure Warsaw and uh, after that after a great start to the season four wins on the trot we did sadly pick up no wins in our last two games uh, first a loss away against Everton in the Premier League our first loss against Everton in the series uh, Babic made it 1-0 and that's how the game finished and our last game was a 2-2 draw at home to Southampton where four goals all four goals were scored inside the first quarter of an hour uh, Clinton Webster who got injured on the opening day against Spurs marked his return from injury with a goal just three minutes in then Weston McKenney a 105 grand a week signing scored his first goal uh, for Millwall as well nine minutes in that's what I love about McKenney putting one over 100 grand a week but he's still not afraid to put his head in where it might hurt uh, so that was 2-0 but then we threw away a two goal lead inside five minutes straight from kickoff Quincy made it 2-1 as the Saints got back in the game in half deficit and then three minutes later I don't know what happened for Southampton's second goal but it was just absolutely atrocious from I think it was Allsop or maybe Ferencek I think it was Allsop and Petkovic a backwards header Petkovic left it and then uh, the Max Max Bermster played a 1-2 off the post and made it 2-2 and uh, we threw away a two goal lead in five minutes unbelievable capitulation and that was how the game finished so no wins in our last two but still a pretty decent start to the season the Premier League right now with four games in and we sit in fifth place with seven points picked up so far so yeah not a bad start not a bad start at all and uh, hopefully we'll pick it up today and get the win against West Brom and get back on track uh, but before that we've got a Europa League game against Leisure Warsaw and we have been drawn in Group D and these are going to be our opponents uh, in the group stages for this year now we have got as we go to the group there we go we have got Leisure Warsaw who you'll see today the Polish side PSV Eindhoven that's going to be a really tough test there the Dutch side and also Bronby uh, the Danish side as well now all three of these clubs have produced new gen slash regen players that I've seen uh, that have worked out quite well for, for other teams around us uh, in this division uh, Leja Warsaw uh, Krajewski plays for Bournemouth and there's another player as well that went to Newcastle was pretty decent and PSV have got a couple of good players there already including this guy uh, Piet who I decided to get a scout report on look at this guy's stats looks absolutely fantastic doesn't he a young Belgian talent only 20 years old so yeah uh, they've got some very very decent players and that's going to be a tough tough group to get out of that one but hopefully uh, like last season we will be able to do just that now as for the transfer I did say there was a new player coming in next uh, sorry to start uh, at the start of January window and that is Keith O'Connell uh, we've agreed this deal with Fulham to bring this English winger in for 31 million pounds now I'll say this right now I know this is an overspend he's not worth 31 million pounds but as I said in the season opener it's hard to get young English talent for a decent fee in FM because they replicate the market really, really well. 
So 31 million pounds of the fee we arranged and he's actually been doing really well for Fulham uh, in the past couple of years, done really, really well. Had some football in the Premier League two, two years ago and did okay. Three goals and five assists in 35 games for a side that went back down to the Championship. But last year did really well in the Championship and I'm hopeful he'll turn out to be a really good player for us. He's only 23 years old, so it's not like the guy's old or anything. He's, he's going to sign a five-year deal and um, he, he's got some good stats. You know, he's quick, he's very quick, 17 acceleration, 18 pace, 17 agility as well. Mental not terrible with 19 teamwork which can be quite important uh, on a winger and also technically as well 15 crossing already he's a right-sided player or play on the right side and could possibly be retrained as an inside forward on the left side with 12 for finishing so yeah not a bad signing I suppose it is an overspend but I want to get more English players into the side uh, as we start off with a core of English players sort of cut that out as the years went by to sort of like make the best financial deals for the club but now I want some more English talent so O'Connell's going to come in 31 million pounds and Hopefully, he'll justify the price tag, although that is quite unlikely. Anyway, uh, first game is going to be against Leisure Warsaw. Uh, we are at the den here for this first Europa League group game of the six, and hopefully we'll start off with the win, just like we did last season. Uh, now, this is our team for the game, and you might notice there are a couple of players that are unregistered for this competition, and those are Ranieri and Capagno. Now, I unregistered them uh, for this competition, because I want to play them in the Premier League primarily, and this is a good chance, this competition, for fringe players to step in and actually show what they're worth. So I unregistered them and they were not happy about it one bit. They wanted to play in the Europa League but I was like, no lads, playing the Premier League is more important but they weren't happy at all. That's why their morale's dropped a little bit but hopefully they'll pick it up. But anyway, uh, this is our team for the game then. We go into 4-2-3-1 for the match because the last two games we tried 4-2-4 and it didn't work. Hopefully a switch of formation will see a switch in results. So Pekovic in goal, about for retirement, Maori, Pavard and James Bree. Our midfield duos, Dobby and Cooley Barley. Attacking midfield trio is Menji on the left, Webster on the right, and O'Reilly, our advanced playmaker, and up top, Julian Benker, going for that golden boot in the Europa League once again. On the bench, Lunin, recovering from a dislocated shoulder, uh, Jordan, Ben Chirwell, The Dream, Louise, Mane, and John Black as well. So first game, it is indeed Laser of Warsaw. Let's start off the group with a win. Come on, you Lions. PSV will definitely be one of the favourites to top this group, but I think we should be as well after a very good debut year in Europe last season. But don't rule out this side from causing us problems as well. You know, they've got some decent players. They've produced some very decent players in the save so far. So they, they definitely could be a, a tricky opponent for us, both home and away. And, uh, and also Bromby as well. Don't, don't rule them out too. This could be quite a tough group, you know. This could be quite a tight, tough group. And the first chance is going to come to the away side or so, it seems, as time makes a tackle. But it drops straight back to the number 30. As they'll look for an opening here in our back line, just inside our own half now. As Jack finds Brostovsky. And he plays it through. But there is Benjamin with the interception who gets it away. And hopefully we'll get our first chance to game. And after no wins in our last two, we want to respond and get the result here. Clinton down the right-hand side. Beats his man for pace. Keeps on going. Eggs the space to cross. In it goes. And at the far post, Menji missed the ball, I think. No, he dinks. He got the assist. And Benka, what a surprise, is the first goal scorer in the group stage in the Europa League. He's going for that golden boot again. And he'll be disappointed if he doesn't get it. Webster down the right. I want to see what happened next. I thought Menji missed the ball. He was underneath the crossbar. Did he, did he hit the ball against the bar and then against Benka, or did he nod it back? I genuinely don't know. It doesn't matter, though. Benka makes it 1-0, and we're in front early. Come on. And a chance to go two goals up straight away as well. Cooley Barley receives the free kick from Tymon, gives it back to our left back, and Josh finds Cooley Barley. And Cooley Barley, no longer a first 11 regular, now finds O'Reilly, who also might not be a first 11 regular if we do switch to 4 2 4 on a more regular basis. But if we play the 4 2 uh, 4 2 3 1, this guy will always be our advanced playmaker. He's really picked it up in the past two to three seasons since we signed him. Cooley Barley into Matt, takes a touch, gets it out of his feet, and what a goal as well. I really like this guy. There's a reason we spent big on him when we first signed him from Fulham. He's got some good potential. Now he's got to prove it and try and get into the England squad as well. 2-0 up and a great start. I want O'Reilly in the England side. He deserves a call-up. He deserves a cap. He's actually been called up to the side before but never been capped yet. And I hope he gets one because he definitely deserves it. As Bree goes down the right-hand side and finds Matt O'Reilly on the ball. Ears are burning. Plays it through to Menji. 
And Menji down the left will cross the middle. Where's Webster at the far post? Can't win it. O'Reilly gets the ball first. Oh, Matt O'Reilly. Give him a call up. Makes it 3 0. And says to Keith O'Connell, I know you're watching on TV at home. When you come here, we'll be the Fulham old boys leading Millwall to new heights. O'Reilly with his second goal of the game already 21 minutes in. What a start to the game. And I did not expect this. Menji would across the middle. Webster lost out in the air. But Matt O'Reilly takes a touch. And oh, yes, what a strike. Freeing it up. Brilliant start. And here we come again. Wow, I did not expect this at all. Brian O'Reilly playing one, two across the middle. Menji's header just over the bar. My goodness, I you know I genuinely thought last year's group was going to be tough, and we won every single game. Now it's very early doors, but we're freeing it up. 26 minutes in, and we are hammering the Polish side right now as we let's continue. O'Reilly into Menji. And Menji gives it back to O'Reilly on a hat-trick. Finds Clinton Webster for the fourth goal. Wow, this is fantastic. 4-0 up, 27 minutes in. I did not see this coming at all. And O'Reilly out there is just pulling the strings right now. If O'Connell is half as good as Matt O'Reilly, then he'll definitely be worth £31 million. Menji to Matt. Lovely slid through ball to Clinton. Great finish, 4-0 up. And, and the game seems done half an hour in. And here we come again. Dobby on the ball finds Menji. And Menji out wide towards Josh Tymon. I may as well take the starters off at half time at this rate. As Tymon finds Matt O'Reilly. Lovely free ball to Benker. On for his second goal, but he finds Webster for his second goal. It's 5-0. 29 minutes in, and we lead by 5 goals to nil. This is nuts. Surely we're not going to score again. Dobby on the ball finds O'Reilly. Crosses. Cleared away. And, uh, and Benker will track down that loose ball and win it for us. This is absolutely fantastic. And after no wins in our last two, I was kind of nervous to start recording this episode, thinking, I've got to hope we respond today on camera. Well, this is what I was looking for. Menji down left crosses. Benker is there. It's 6-0. 40 minutes in, 6-0. Unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. This is just... We're not stopping. We are showing no mercy right now. O'Reilly on the ball, finds a bit of space. Out wide towards James Brew. We've got three players going for hat-tricks right now. And there is one of them in Benker, headed away. He'll come back towards Webster. Benker, O'Reilly, all three of them going for the hat-tricks. But instead, Menji gets a goal. And it's 7-0. 41 minutes in, it's 7-0. This is just ludicrous. Bree into Clinton. Clinton on the ball crosses. Headed away, but Leicester Le also just can't, can't get the ball clear at the moment. We're just not stopping putting the pressure on. Great selfless play by Benker. And Menji with the goal makes it 7-0 to Millwall. Heading into half time. We, we've got three players on hat tricks. Menji's got a couple of assists. Benga's got a couple of assists. Th this is just fantastic stuff. This might well be the, the biggest win of the series. Well, there shouldn't really be much need to change things at half time when you're leading by seven goals to nil. But we are going to take off time and for Chilwell. Uh, still be fit enough to play the full 90 against West Brom so we can regain that conditioning. And uh, I, I don't want to, I never like to take players off when they're going for hat tricks. I don't know if you guys are the same as me, but I never like to take players off when they're on for the match ball. We've got three players on for the match ball, and Webster's only just coming back to fitness, so I think it's best to take him off and, uh, and make sure he can definitely play against West Brom and not risk, uh, risk another injury for him. We need Webster fit, as you can see, by how good he's played tonight. So, yeah, Webster's coming off. He'll not be happy, but there's still two other players to go for the match ball themselves. 7-0 up, though, as the second half begins. This has been fantastic. However, our opponents are going to look to reduce the deficit in the second half, that's for sure. As Benker is onto this through ball, and Benker going for that trick himself here. Keeps on going, takes it wide, and crosses. O'Reilly is there, missed the ball, headed clear. But Dobby is first to lose ball. I want to see either O'Reilly or Benker get their hat trick. And right on cue, Benker has got it. 8-0, 50 minutes in, and Benker wants that golden boot. And he wants it sewn up in the group stages, I think. Menji's been fantastic tonight. I'm going to give him more minutes this season, that's for sure. As the El Salvador winger sort of had his minutes reduced a little bit as the series has gone by. But obviously, we'll never forget how good this guy was at the start of our, uh, our Premier League campaign. He came in the championship as well. Menji to Benker, nice finish, 8-0. And, well, what an incredible game. I'm speechless. This is just nuts. Dobby with the free kick. Floats it in. And Maori joins in the act as well. It's 9-0. 54 minutes in. And Maori, who I forgot to mention, signed a new four-and-a-half-year deal uh, just before the transfer window shut to rule out any chance of him leaving the club as Juventus and Spurs are interested in him, has now made it 9-0. 55 minutes in. And there was me saying this could be quite a tough group. Don't rule out these guys. We're 9-0 up against them in the first game. There is no way this scoreline is the same away in Poland, though. No way. 
So as the game comes to its close, I don't think we're going to get it into double digits, and I'm kind of glad about that as well, because that's a little bit harsh. But 9-0 will be the final score, as if that's not harsh enough on our visitors today. And we have got a very convincing win. That's the biggest win of the series. So I'm so glad I captured it on camera. A 9-0 victory in the group opener. And I'm passionately going to say to the boys, I'm very happy with the result and the way you played. And see, Capagno Ranieri, this is why I didn't register you boys for this competition. We would rather play you in the Premier League and let fringe players impress on this stage instead. So... Well, what a fantastic group opener. I'm literally speechless. That could not have gone better, like, in my wildest dreams. That is unbelievable. The perfect way to, to start the group off. Incredible. You know when you're watching, like, Soccer Saturday or whatever, and the scorelines come in, and it's a big scoreline, and, and next to the number, they'll have the number written out, if you will. So it will say, like, you know, Huddersfield, like, 10, Leicester 1, and then, like, next to the number 10, it will have, like, in brackets, 10 written out. That's what they should have done for, for that game there. Nine. Yes, really, nine goals. Incredible. You know, I genuinely don't remember having a team uh, for an FM save I've done on YouTube. I have uh, Millwall for definite. Uh, Hull, Swansea, Southampton or Everton scoring nine plus goals in a competitive fixture. So that might actually be the biggest win I've had uh, for an FM save on YouTube in a competitive game. I, I think it would be. I, I think it must be, surely. Because again, I, I don't remember ever scoring nine goals uh, for one of those teams before. So that's that's incredible. But I know for sure we're not going to score as many goals in the second and final game here against West Brom. Lightning will not strike twice. That's for definite. This should be a much tougher game. But I would take the same result. I just want back-to-back -back victories for today's episode. So let's go get it here back in the Premier League. And if we can score nine goals again, that would be amazing. Anyway, uh, sticking to 4-2, 3-1 for the game uh, after that fantastic win but making a lot of changes to our lineup uh, Petkovic is in goal about for retirement Jordan coming in Carl also up against his former team and Ranieri as well our midfield duo is Paolo and McKenney with our attacking midfield trio being that deadly one Louise on the left Webster on the right and O'Reilly the advanced playmaker supporting Julian Benker who will start up top as Marek is yet to get a goal this season and I know he seems to only do it in Europe but Benker's got some absolutely wonderful stats we know that we've been progressing the guy so well well, he's, he's got to be the future of our team up top, surely. He's incredible, and he's got nine goals in four in the Europa League, so surely he's got to come good domestically as well. On the bench, Lunin, Maori, Ahumada, Dobby, Menji, Marek, and Redinaldo as well. Second game, it's West Brom. Can we score nine again? I doubt it, but I'll take the win just on its own. Come on. I don't think this will be an easy game. I know I said against Leisure Warsaw, but West Brom has looked, man, far as in straight away. I was just about to say, West Brom are a side who are quite a bogey team for us. And if you remember at the start of the say, we faced them quite a few times and we just couldn't beat them. We do struggle against the baggy, so I'm not surprised we're 1-0 down inside the first minute. Calvert-Lewin down the right hand side, crossing to the middle, and also and Jordan Neither, which got it away, and look, man, on Marks of the Far Post makes it 1-0. So, well, we won 9-0 against Leisure of Warsaw on Thursday night. We're 1-0 down inside a minute here. Football's a funny old game and we trail early. They're a bogey team that we just can't seem to shake. 1-0 down inside the first minute and, and one thing that really frustrates me as well is how how badly Benker performs in, uh, in in the Premier League compared to his Europa League football. And we've just given away a penalty as well. I'm not sure you conceded that. I didn't realise at first. Is that Barkley taking it? It is indeed. And West Brom have gone two goals up 23 minutes in. Well, 2-0 down already, an absolutely atrocious start. And, and this is unbelievable, man. Seriously, Europa League group stages, we're fantastic. But Premier League at the moment just can't get it sorted. Barkley would have finished 2-0 down and an awful, awful start. Oh no, and not an injury for Webster. This just makes things even worse. Everything was going fantastic. Now it's all going wrong. So Webster's not going to have to come off. Uh, we will bring on Menji for a straight swap there. And, you know, I'm very tempted to switch to 4-2-4 now. But that means we've got to take off another midfielder as well before we do that. So uh, for half time, so I I think I think we'll just leave it at the four two three one for now. But this is this is atrocious. Webster off. The reason we took him off at half time on Thursday was we wouldn't have an injury, and now he's got one. Forty minutes in to the game on Sunday, so two nil down as we're about to get into the dressing room, and this is absolutely atrocious. Premier League at the moment we're struggling. You know, every single FM save you have, there'll always be one bogey team you got. West Brom is definitely ours. 2-0 down, second half begins, and unless we can sort this out, 
we are going to have no wins in our last three Premier League games. Forget the 9-0 win on Thursday night. This is not good enough. So we're not playing well at all. I'm going to switch to 4-2-4 right now. I'm going to take off O'Reilly. I'm going to bring on Marek. Come on, club captain. Sort it out for us and come good when we need you most here. Half an hour to go. Still trailing by two. Need a response. So we're just about to sub Benker off, who's had an atrocious game out there. Nine goals in four in Europa League, but none in the Premier League to start the season off. How can this guy have such amazing stats, such an amazing goal-to-game ratio in Europe, but in the Premier League be absolutely useless? Mystified. But he's come off for Redinaldo. Things are getting desperate when you know that Redinaldo's replacing you. You know you're not playing well when Redinaldo's coming on. But we're 2-0 down, and we're going to lose the game. We've done absolutely nothing. The 4-2-3-1 just doesn't seem to work in the Premier League, whereas in Europe it's a really good system for us. But... That's not going to be the way I was hoping to end today's episode off. No wins in our last three Premier League games. Only one point picked up from nine. And that's why we slid down the table to 10th. And again, despite that big win on Thursday night, that doesn't paper over the cracks too much. It's not been a great run here in the Premier League. And we need to sort it out sooner rather than later. And there might be one chance if West Brom to go 3-0 up. And they've done just that to compile the misery on us. Sanabria with a finish. Barkley gets an assist to go along with a goal he scored earlier. And we are going to lose at the den by three goals nil against West Brom. Complacency. That's what it was. We were getting so excited after the 9-0 victory. What a big win. And then a terrible 3-0 defeat at home to West Brom. They're our bogey team. The baggies have our number. And this is a really, really poor loss to end on. So... 3-0 should be the final score, at least I hope so. They're going to try and score as many goals against us like we did on Thursday night to Leija Warsaw. And that is not how I wanted to end today's episode off as well. But clearly room for improvement in the Premier League. Europa League, great start. Premier League, not great. But that will do it then, as Menji just about get the ball in play. And we'll just wait for the final whistle to come any second now. And is it going to come now? Nope, still waiting for it. And there is the final whistle. So... Wow, how about that? 3-0 to West Brom, the final score. You just, you got to love FM, don't you, man? Seriously, you just never know how the games are going to go. And I'm going to say it was not good enough. We're going to get aggressive as well and say we weren't good enough. That was the sort of match we should be winning. Everyone's motivated and fired up, but I'm quite concerned about the injury for Webster. He's already had one twisted ankle this season. Hopefully, it's not a reoccurring injury. And it's pulled ankle ligaments two to three weeks and whew, Webster, 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 Webster. The one thing we don't want is Webster to have these reoccurring injuries on that ankle because reoccurring injuries in FM, like once a player starts getting a weak spot, that's when they really do start to struggle for injuries as the say goes on. So Webster injured, Marek still on that goal drought and uh, not a great way to end today's episode off after it was a fantastic start to today's episode. But that will end the episode though, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like as likes are, of course, very much appreciated. And the really out channel out as well. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for next episode very soon which will feature games against uh oh how about that double header right there chelsea away at stanford bridge and then bromby away in denmark and that will be our third game of the europa league group stage as well so yeah let's do that chelsea away and bromby away as well and we'll play those two games in the next episode so have a great day guys much love and i'll see you for the next episode which hopefully is just as dramatic as this one and unpredictable very soon bye